In this video, we're looking at a lens combination with a diverging lens on the left, a converging lens on the right, and we have an object sitting five centimeters to the left of that diverging lens. Now, just to look at the specs on the problem real quick, the diverging lens has a focal length of negative 20 centimeters, and the minus sign there is to use in the thin lens equation. The two foci for this lens have a distance of 20 centimeters from the diverging lens. And given that the object distance is five centimeters from that diverging lens, we can see on the grid that every two spaces counts for five centimeters. So I have five, 10, 15, and 20, and I see F1 is a distance of 20 centimeters to the left of the diverging lens. I can do the same thing, finding F1 to the right of the diverging lens, five, 10, 15, and 20. Then our converging lens is 15 centimeters away from this diverging lens. That's six spaces, two, four, six, away from the diverging lens. And if I start at that converging lens and I count spaces to the left and right, I'll find my focal length at 30 centimeters away. So again, every two spaces is five centimeters, five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. There's F2 on the left, five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. There's F2 on the right. Okay, now that the introduction is out of the way, what's the point of the problem? We're going to do a complete ray diagram using all three principal rays at each stage to find the final image formed by the combination of these two lenses. We're going to try to be as accurate as we possibly can and use our ray diagram to make approximations for the final image distance relative to the second lens and the final magnification of the image. In the second part of the video, we're going to actually algebraically determine that final image distance and total magnification, and hopefully we see pretty good agreement between the two approaches. So let's get started with the ray diagram. The first thing we do is take a ray parallel to the principal axis off of that object. And that's going to refract away from the principal axis as if it's coming from F1. Next, we can take the ray emanating from the head of the object and passing through the center of that first lens and that's unrefracted. And finally, we can take a ray that's headed at F1 on the opposite side of the lens. And that one is refracted so that it's parallel to the principal axis. Now on the right side of the diverging lens, I see three diverging rays. And if we trace these back to a common origin, that's where the first image forms. Two of them are already traced back and I can see that they intersect right here. And I can verify that everything is correct by tracing that middle ray back and seeing that it crosses in the same place as the other two rays traced back. So this is where the first image forms. And now because this first image lands to the left of the second lens, we can treat this as a real object that will produce an image when it interacts with that second lens. If your first image lands on the wrong side of the second lens, that's the virtual object case. And I'll post a link to an example where I treat that case. The one we're looking at is simpler. I have a real second object. I can treat it just like an ordinary object interacting with that converging lens for the second stage. So we start to take rays off of this first image. And the first one I'm going to look at is one that comes off parallel to the principal axis. And that's going to be refracted through the focus for the second lens, which was F2 way out here. Then I look at a ray that comes off at the right angle to pass through the center of the second lens, and that is unrefracted. And finally, I look at a ray that's coming at the second lens from the direction of F2 on the near side. And that ray is refracted parallel to the principal axis. Now I have a final set of three diverging rays to the right of the second lens, and I need to trace all these back to a common origin. When I get to that common origin, that's where the final image is going to form. So I'm gonna go way back here. And I can see that these three rays converge somewhere around here. And this is where our final image is going to form. Now we can get into our geometric approximations for the final image distance and the magnification. That final image distance, we're going to call that DI2. And that's the distance between the final image and lens number two. Now, if I start counting spaces, again, every two spaces is five centimeters. So I have five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, and almost 50. I'll just call it 49. Now with the sign conventions for lens problems, I'm going to call that a negative 49, meaning it landed on the same side of that second lens. My total magnification, the notation for that is a capital M. And I would take the size of the final image and divide by the size of the original object. Well, the original object is a little bit obscured now, but it looked like it was about one and a half spaces on the grid. And then my final image is a little bigger than three spaces. I'm gonna call it about 3.3. 
and this gives me a total magnification of about 2.2. Now these geometric approximations are very sensitive to how perfectly you make the ray diagram, but we're hoping this agrees reasonably with what we get using the thin lens and magnification equations. So let's get into the algebraic approach to the problem. First, I want the final image distance. So I'm going to label the original object distance between the original object and the first lens as D01. And remember that was five centimeters. And the focal length of that first lens, that diverging lens, was negative 20 centimeters, and we plug into the thin lens equation, and we solve for 1 over di1. That's the image distance for the image produced by the first lens. And that gives me 1 over f1, so a negative 1 over 20, minus 1 over do1, so minus 1 over 5. So I smash the two numbers on the right in my calculator, and then I take the reciprocal of the result to get di1. This gives me an image distance of negative four centimeters. Let's go back to the ray diagram and see if this looks correct. So I'm back in my original ray diagram and this is the first image that I'm talking about. And given that every two spaces is five centimeters, well this is a little less than two spaces, so it's reasonable to say that's about four centimeters. So things look good so far. Now I need to use that first image as the object for the second lens. And I've got to figure out how far is that first image from the second lens. Well, the separation between lenses was 15 centimeters. And this image that I'm using as my second object, that was 4 centimeters additional to the left of lens 1. That gives me a total of 19 centimeters from lens 2. And the focal length for that converging lens was 30 centimeters. And I plug into the thin lens equation again. So 1 over f is 1 over 30. And then I have a minus 1 over do2, so minus 1 over 19. We smash the numbers on the right hand side, take the reciprocal of the result, and I get a final image distance of negative 51.8 centimeters. Going back to the previous slide, remember that we approximated that image distance as negative 49 centimeters, so we have a very small percent difference here, and we're happy with that. Now let's look at the magnification. The magnification has to be broken into two stages. You have the magnification created by the processing of the image through each lens. And at each stage, the magnification, I'll just move my first one down here, across from my first image distance, my magnification is going to be the negative of the image distance over the object distance. And that minus sign there is included to make it so that if an image is upright, it's a positive magnification, and if the image is inverted, it's a negative magnification. Well, my image distance for that first lens was negative 4. My object distance was 5, and I get a positive 4 over 5, or positive 0.8. My magnification at the second stage, again, is going to be the negative of the image distance over the object distance. Remember, the object distance was 19 there. And again, I get a positive magnification, and this time it comes out to 2.73. Now, my total magnification is just the product of the two magnifications. And that's 0.8 times 2.73. And when I run the numbers here, I get 2.18 positive for my total magnification. Positive meaning the final image is upright. And if I go back and check to see what we got in the ray diagram, we got about 2.2 from the ray diagram. So that's also a very small percent error. So we're happy with that result as well. If you enjoyed this video or at least found it useful, check out another one by clicking one of the links on the left or click the Zax Lab logo on the right to explore dozens of physics and math playlists. As always, you can leave your questions, comments, and requests in the comments section below, and I'll get back to you within 24 hours. Thanks for watching Zax Lab, and best of luck on your math and physics journey.